Well, the Halo Infinite August development update has gone live, but it has a lot of people in the community upset about XP gains within Halo Infinite. How so? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Well guys, the last Thursday of the month has come around and that means another Halo Infinite blog update for us to go over the entire thing. Most of this blog update does cover the bots and what they learned from the tech preview. So we have some decisions that they made that are gonna be coming in for the next tech preview, as well as XP gains within Halo Infinite and how it has sparked a bit of controversy within the Halo community. So let's jump right into that news, guys. So if you like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you wanna see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release on December 8th of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So we're gonna do like two parts for this video. The first half is gonna be just the facts and the second half is gonna be community reaction and my reaction as well to here in the news. So like I said at the top of the video guys, this blog update is kind of wordy and mostly about the bots and also the learnings for the flight and say how they can improve the situation for the next flight as well. There's been some critical gameplay changes as well coming for the next flight that I wanted to cover for you guys. This is all very wordy, quite lengthy and very insightful, but not a whole lot of like crazy big news but it's really good to know what's coming for the next flight as well as some xp gains and also joseph stain's experience with playing the campaign of halo infinite covering out some of the changes that are coming for the next tech preview which we don't have a release date quite yet i'm assuming sometime after the labor day holiday probably around the 9th or the 16th of september was probably when i would expect to see it happen but in this part we have some changes that were coming from community feedback from the tech preview the test out again within the next one. A big change here is coming from the combat sensor, which if you guys remember in the tech preview, it only tracked when you shot and basically when you sprinted. I heard also when you use equipment, but I couldn't confirm that one. But basically just walking speed, you don't show up on radar, which personally I liked, but it seemed like a lot of people weren't too big fans of it, but they want to test it out. Saying, we have a new iteration that will be in the next preview, which will be more in line with players' expectations. When you're in line with player expectations of a Halo sensor, I have a feeling it's gonna revert back to more of the classic style radar, where it's any kind of motion that happens, you're showing up on radar, which I'm all right with. Me, personally, I'm not like the huge fan of that. I actually really liked the abilities radar that we had, where it only tracked like when you shot, I guess you, when you use equipment or sprinted, uh, just because it kind of sped up the gameplay a little bit and didn't really feel like I had to like sneak around so a whole lot. Especially since we're playing against bots and stuff. People might have thought like, well, why do I need to bother with crouching and stuff like that when I play against bots? But think on a map like Bazaar, if you're trying to do a nice little flank try and get behind the enemy, you're probably gonna have to crouch around underneath them the whole time, which moves you so slowly throughout the map that it might not even be able to really properly flank with the classic radar, which sounds like it's coming back. If you have the ability radar, you can just keep walking at full speed. It really helps speed up the gameplay so you can actually have pull off some really awesome flanks. But I think it really just kind of comes down how it plays out. I think with the classic radar, with the just tracking motion and things like that, I think it would certainly help out like social solo players. But if you're playing like against a party or if you're playing more ranked, I would like to see the ability radar. But you know, that kind of just comes down with time played and practice and feedback as well, of course. The next bit talks about medals. People have not really enjoyed the medals within Halo Infinite. They seem kind of small, a little lackluster, and the visual design of them isn't that great, to be honest, in my opinion as well. But it looks like 343 here it's gonna be taking your feedback into consideration here. Stating within this blog update, saying sentiment on metal visuals has been heard and that our UR team is investigating, addressing some of that feedback. Lastly, it was helpful to see what resonated most with our players to inform areas of growth as we look beyond launch. So to me, this sounds like we heard you, probably not, not gonna change much before launch, but they'll probably look into it over time whether or not they wanna change the visuals of the medals, which I kind of agree, because I think that a lot of them are like a little lackluster, to be honest. The voiceover system is gonna change as well from your AI as well as the Spartans with the now instant classic over yonder Probably be start hearing that a little bit less as they said they kind of buffed the threshold when you're going to be hearing these kind of call outs from Spartans. Basically reducing the chatter because that was one bit of feedback like, like between your AI 
Jeff Steitzer and also the Spartans. There's just so many things talking and happening at the same time that honestly to me as well, I kind of tuned it all out because it was just kind of noise at that point and I couldn't really pick out what was happening. And for the next tech preview, your personal AI, your biggest request was the ability to preview their voices is going to be part of the next flight, which is great. Next weapon drills are changing a bit as well as they found out a lot of the more close range weapons or weapons that you were trying to do drills with kind of found themselves in not the proper range. They said specifically like the Bulldog that you'd be shooting targets so far out of range of an intended Bulldog range that it kind of made it redundant and kind of pointless to do the drill. But it looks like they've reproved that now. And so you be sh when you're doing drills, you should be coming across more appropriate encounters when using certain weapons within the drills. And it looks like the Spartan bots are gaining a buff as well saying that the difference between Spartan and ODST bots should feel like a significant increase in difficulty. And it seems like they didn't reach that target. And I would kind of agree with that. Whenever they slapped onto the, like the ODST and Spartan bots, it all just kind of felt the same. I didn't really notice much of a difference besides like maybe grenade tossing and strafing. Like we're still smashing these bots, like in these matches, like 50 to 10 and stuff like that. So if you're playing a Spartan bots, I'd like to see a little bit more of a put up a fight. Uh, they do say that they recognize a lot of the bots were like kind of running up against walls, doing the same kind of pathing, gathering up in groups, not grabbing power weapons or power ups and things like that. So they're looking into improve that. So over time, Halo Infinite bots will be improving. This next section, Joseph Steen actually clarifies why there was no campaign gameplay shown at Gamescom and which was a little bit of a disappointment. They said basically we're here saying one, to shed light on why they chose not to show campaign right now. And people in the second part of this section that he types in is to kind of ease people's concerns. Like they stated in the development update in August that the Halo Infinite team is on shutdown mode. Basically putting their heads down, squashing bugs, fixing the game up properly. We refer to it as the sterile cockpit kind of situation, which you guys know in aviation, it means like when your pilot's about to land, nobody bothers the pilot to make sure they can completely focus on the landing and get it done properly. That's kind of what they're in right now. Saying that if they're gonna do any gameplay demos and trailers, that it would take a huge amount of effort to do so and would actually not make it so you can complete some bugs, which right now for me, I'm like, complete the game, squash those bugs, I don't really need to see more campaign stuff. This next section, Joseph Satan kind of gives you the assurance that Halo Infinite's campaign is playing well, saying, I had the pause to play through on his flight, right here saying of the campaign that started last week where he's going through 100% run, means completing all primary and secondary missions fighting all collectibles. He's saying, I've played Halo Infinite's campaign multiple times, but every time I do, I always find something new tucked away on Zeta Halo. Sometimes these are quiet little bits of environmental storytelling, such as an abandoned or desperately defended marine recon post. High on a lonely mountainside, unfortunately, the Banished miss the fully loaded S7 sniper rifle that the Marines left behind. Sometimes these combat encounters are deviously polished scripting. For example, a UNSC forward operating base that seemed abandoned, and I heard the laughter and taunts of multiple energy wielding cloaked elites as I stumbled upon their trap. So yes, to reiterate, I'm actually kind of glad they didn't bother trying to show or any kind of gameplay or try to create any kind of demo because obviously that takes development and resources away from squashing bugs and making sure Halo Infinite releases properly. A lot of people feel that we don't really know a lot about the campaign of Halo Infinite, but we honestly kind of know a lot. It's just that the information has been drip fed to us over the course of like two or years plus that at the moment you probably go like, I can't tell you what's going on with the game. But when you sit down and think about it, there's actually a lot of things we already know. That might even be its own video that I need to make right there. And this last section here, guys, has the community a bit up in arms when it comes to progression within Halo Infinite. And that's the progression within the battle pass. Jerry Hook, who is the head of design at 343 for Halo Infinite, goes on to talk about the battle pass and how they're all kind of, kind of funneled through challenges, it looks like. Jerry Hook first wanted to clarify one thing he said on the tech preview live stream, said, in our live stream, I stated that the battle pass system will always have free and paid rewards available at each tier. This statement is incorrect for our launch battle pass. Our goal is to provide great value to players for their time spent playing Halo, whether they choose to go to the premium route by purchasing the Battle Pass or by unlocking incremental Battle Pass items that are available for free. So while there isn't a free reward at every tier, there will be numerous free rewards to acquire across the entirety of the Battle Pass 
Now this is the information coming up right here is what's got the community up in arms a little bit. Talking about the challenge system within Halo Infinite. These two bullet points basically talking about how players were not able to progress in the battle pass because challenges for the bot preview were like capture flags and CTF. Well, you're only playing bot slayers, so you can't do that, can't progress to the challenges. That's why in the next update for the next tech preview that they will have that fixed. And so then appropriate challenges will be happening for you guys so you don't get blocked on that. But this last line here is what's got people up in arms saying using challenges. Our goal is that you'll always be earning progress in our battle pass through playing and winning matches. This will allow you to always jump into the game of Halo and make progress on your goals, which sounds good at first. But then actually a lot of people started seeing some concerns about this on Twitter, especially some content creators for saying, great to hear that if you just earn XP, you can make progress. That's not the case when it comes to the battle pass of Halo Infinite. Unishek on Twitter had to clarify saying you earn progress on your battle pass by completing challenges. That's how you rank up. That's how you earn XP. You do not earn XP for playing a match. You earn XP by completing challenges, which will help you make progression on your battle pass, which initially to me, concerns me because why are you forcing players to go through the challenge system to earn progression on their battle pass and that's the only way to earn xp and progression on your battle pass which sounds kind of terrible at first but on my live stream which we do stream every tuesday and thursday guys if you want to check us out there we discover we talk about more halo news and play some mcc and stuff like that as well saying that it's actually a very similar system that's right now in the mcc where you have to complete challenges to earn seasonal points to make progression on your battle pass so if you're cool with the way the mcc works likely we'll see a very similar system when it comes to Halo Infinite. So probably like very generic challenges like for PvP, kill 10 players within matchmaking games, something like that. Maybe more specific ones like like an MCC right now is get like 10 medals of playing objective. We'll probably see some campaign challenges as well thrown on top of that. But the MCC, all the challenges are rather specific and yet generic at the same time where you can kind of just play the game how you want and you'll still be making progression. So it sounds like a very similar system is going to be coming in for Halo Infinite as well. So at face value, it's it's a little shocking like oh gosh i don't like it you're forcing me how to play forcing me to play halo how you want me to play rather than me choose my path but i'm sure the challenges will be generic enough where you can kind of just play and you'll be earning your challenges just fine and they also did state there is a near infinite amount of challenges unless you're like a super grinder of xp within halo infinite you know, that's the only time you ever come across an issue of having of not having enough challenges to go through. Personally, what I would like to see happening is that if you just play a match, you earn XP and a little bit of progression on your battle pass. That totally makes sense. But maybe doing these challenges will help give you a nice little leap or a nice really big jump in progression to completing challenges. So essentially the most effective way to play would be completing challenges, kind of like how 343 wants you to do right now in Halo Infinite. But maybe for those people who just want to play and don't want to follow along with the challenges, you're still making progression in some way, but it's still much smaller and incremental. This also has me lightly concerned that if there's going to be any kind of form of a ranking system when it comes to social play, just kind of showcasing like, you know, like in Call of Duty, right? You have your different prestiges to kind of showcase how much you play the game, just kind of flex on people a little bit your to your dedication of the game. Well, it doesn't really seem like they're mentioning that at all within Halo Infinite. That's something I would really like to see. It might not be there at launch, but I think eventually with enough community feedback, that's something I think will get added because that's definitely something people want. I mean, they did that to the MCC and people love it. But as soon as we get more information about the XP ranking system within Halo Infinite, you guarantee I'll be making a video about that as well, guys. So if you're new to the channel and missed any content from me recently, here's a playlist with all my Halo news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.